this is the world's most simple pattern that I have made. Very difficult. <laughs> I've definitely amped up the difficulty rating by using and mixing minky with cotton. It does come out, it does work, but definitely listen to all the tips and tricks because it's gonna get real when you try it. It is Valentine's Day, so exciting. We talked about which fabrics uh, I should use and nobody chose these, but <laughs> these are the ones that ended up coming home with me. So we've got our fabric number one, our fabric number two, actually, I think this is gonna be fabric three and this is gonna be fabric number two. We are going to do the unthinkable and already it's already starting we are going to fight with this i have not vacuumed my floor but i'm going to show that it is possible to piece with minky um this is a really nice and simple pattern and i think it's just one where i'm gonna want to do this right <laughs> like i'm just gonna just gonna want to do this a little bit so I'm going to show you the things that we are going to need. I've got my trusty dusty dust buster. I've got my sweep right here and anything else that I might need. I actually have my lint roller down here too. So we are going to try to keep it as contained as possible. But we're also just going to live with the fact that yes, we have got, we are going to uh, have a mess, a little bit of a mess for a little bit. But I'm going to show you how to combat some of that and I think this is going to be a great fun option so let's do it the first thing that i'm going to do is hit this with all of the starch um i'm going to make sure that this is starched really well because we're using minky we're not going to be using a super duper hot iron to press so we are going to hit this with some um not best press but the quilting magic spray which i think is better I'm not going to do Terial Magic because that'll just make it feel like cardboard, but we are going to really give this a nice, robust spray and let it dry up a little bit and then press it. So I am going to cut this backwards because we are going to try to get all of our cutting done before we do any um, cuddle cutting because we know that cuddle is going to make a mess. And so we are just going to try to control it the best we can and I am just freshening this up here and then we are going to take a couple of cuts and then we will be moving on this is going to be a very fast cutting job somebody asked to see the cutting so I'll show this one. This is not complicated. I could have folded this in half, but instead I've just chosen to do it this way. Nothing um, special about this. Fabric is folded in half and I'm just running my rotary cutter. So it's only two layers. And I will not be doing this for all of them because watching me cut can be very, very, very boring. <laughs> it can be kind of mesmerizing, but it can be kind of boring. So we're just going to cut these up. Then I am going to subcut these guys. And these have been, again, these have been pressed hardcore. Hardcore, hardcore. I just opened a new ruler. Where did it go? Here we go. And I'm going to take the... I'm going to take this off here. Just a salvage. And then I'm going to take this and flip it around and cut a little more. And 
then I'm going to do another cut. And I'm just going to keep sub cutting all of these strips until I have how many I need. So these are the border strips. So I am not going to cut the binding out. I think I want the binding to be something different. So all I needed to cut were these strips and a bunch of those squares. Now I'm going to switch over to the number one fabric. So I cut the number three. Now we're going to cut the number one. And number one is going to be super duper duper easy. I could fold this in half. Yep. Opening it up. All right. I'm going to freshen up one of these edges. And I'm going to make sure that this is straight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know it does not look straight, but I'm making sure that this line right here hits the same spot here and there at the top and the bottom. I know this is going up a hill, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm trying to see that these lines are running straight so that we don't have any leaning nodes. All right. It is not absolutely necessary that we leave these in order. However, I've done a quilt similar to this and I like it. I like it better when it's continuous. It's broken up by the um, funsy blocks, but I like to just keep them in the same order. It just, I don't know. It gives your eye kind of a, it just makes sense. I don't know. Do your thing. Mix them up. I'm going to keep mine the same. So I've cut these strips and I'm going to subcut these strips. And they look pretty straight, which makes me kind of happy. They look pretty straight. And what do I mean when I say straight? I mean, I know that I cut this straight, but you can see that this kind of hits in the same place. It's parallel. It's not wonky because I didn't want the gnomes leaning. So now I'm just going to sub cut them to what I need them to be. And then, uh, yeah. So before I cut my fabric number two, I know that I am going to have to draw a diagonal line on all of these. So I am just going to start that process right now before I even get to doing all that cutting with the fabric number two. So I'm going to do this like 36 times and then we'll go from there. So I'm doing my last one. Can you guys see that 45 degree angle right there? Um, I can go in a little bit. With that 45, I just line up this bottom piece of this triangle with it. And that way I know that I've got a nice 45 and I just inch around until it looks good. And then I go on ahead and give it a little, a little something here. So that way we have it going down the center. All right, now I'm gonna put these to the side and go get my number two fabric. Oh my goodness, you guys ready? Let's do it. When I'm at the store, I usually have them cut it last and put it in its own bag because, you know, it gets messy. So I did that. Nothing new there. And Minky is a little bit longer than regular fabric so we know that you can get it in like 60 and 80 so I'm gonna have a little bit more than I anticipated and I am going to just start to unroll it like I would usual fabric I'm not gonna shake it everywhere that's a no-no 
and I am going to suck up as I see fit. So I've got my shark here and I'm just gonna, I see it going everywhere. I'm just gonna suck up as I go along. I'm gonna see it get a mess and I'm gonna be okay with it. And then I'm just gonna suck some of it, some of it up. Again, we're not, we're gonna try not to just be flinging it everywhere. We're gonna try not to do that. We're gonna be trying to be very intentional about our movements, but I'm also planning to clean up the craft room after I finish with this quilt. So no worries. So we are just going to straighten this up here. This is that low pile minky. I think at this point, all the minky is coming from Shannon Fabrics. I don't know anybody else who's really doing minky that I can think of off the top of my head. And I'm going to just use it like I do regular fabric. I'm going to freshen up this edge and I'm going to cut my strips. Okay, nothing special about that. I'm just going to not be scared and <laughs> cut these strips. All right, I'm just moving through this. Yes, I am cutting the long ways because this fabric is long. And so, and I'm betting instead of cutting, I'm betting I can cut fewer strips and get what I need. I'm gonna actually do the math in just one moment. To see so I just cut my strips and I have vacuumed up just a little bit this is a, still a mess not a problem Ooh, a little candy from candies uh, not a problem I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more vacuuming I'm just taking my time I'm not freaking out. Not a big deal. When I move this, there's going to be more. Look, I'm not freaking out. Not a big deal. We're just going to... Not a big deal. Now I'm going to cut off a very large chunk of this. I've combined the next strips, the smaller strips. I have combined them. And I'm going to cut off a nice chunk of fabric because I'm actually going to stabilize it. Why? Because they are such thin strips, I think that's going to be the best way to handle this fabric. So I'm going to cut it a little bit larger than what I think I need and then I'm gonna iron some stabilizer on the back and then I'm throwing everything even the scraps in that bag in the dryer for low heat no heat for about 10 minutes clean out the lint trap do it again so I grabbed some craft fuse only because it's what I have I would have preferred some SF 101 or something less sturdy you know I've got all this cuddle and I have this but what I'm not gonna do is go buy more of anything right now we are trying to not buy things so I have a whole bolt of Pellon craft fuse 805 and this will work and I am I've just cut it down to be a little bit smaller than this and then I'm just gonna iron it on the back to make it a little bit more sturdy and then I'm gonna chop it up into the rest of what it needs to be just, uh, yeah, I'm just going to iron it on the back. No uh, nice low, um, medium heat. What is this stuff on my minky here? 
I don't know. But I am going to do that and then that will be that. So I have ironed on this interfacing and it looks pretty good. It's not my best interfacing job. No worries. No worries. And we are going to, I don't know what is going on right there, but anyway, we are going to subcut, subcut like champs. And um, first thing I'm going to do is take off the edge to make sure I'm getting all interfacing. So I'm going to take off a little bit of that edge and then I'm just going to start chopping away until I reach my corner over here with how many cuts I need. So, now that I have them, I've got to subcut them. <laughs> and I'm just flipping them over. I'm not working on Minky side, I'm working on this side. And that way we just, we don't have any problems. And I'm just going to keep cutting. And then again, like I said, I'm going to take all of them and I'm going to throw them in the dryer on no low heat. No or low heat. So, um, it's a mess. <laughs> my battery went dead on my little vacuum, which is not a big deal. I've just been kind of pulling it off. Not a big deal because when I run my Dyson, I'm not going to have any issues. So I'm going to take this and put this all in this bag because I have cut up as much as I'm going to cut up and um, take this and put this in the dryer and then all will be right with the world. So now I have these fresh out, fresh out the dryer, this fur wizard has been my best friend. I just, it picks up so well. And then you just plop it back in here and pull it back out and it's ready to go. Loving this guy, it has been a lifesaver. So now I'm just gonna take these and put them right sides together. Because this is, you know, funky fabric and whatnot, I am going to, and we're not finished doing all of our cutting either. So I'm going to put these right sides together and I'm going to do a little pinning. So pin either side. And here are the rest of my squares. Now I'm going to change out my spool to 100% polyester. And I'm going to elongate my stitch length to I usually sew at a 2.5 I think I'm going to switch it to a 3.5 for this and then we will be cooking with gas so we have our blocks here and I have taken them out of the dryer and some of them have been fluffed to perfection and some of them we just have to hit a little bit with this fur wizard which is perfect because it works really well just like that it works so well to just take off the little extra fluffies here then we are going to pin these right sides together and we are going to pin 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 like the dickens because this minky for whatever reason just shifts your fabric the minute that you touch it this is an easy quilt in theory and execution it's gonna t it's gonna challenge you there's no getting around it it just is i am going to put a couple of these little clips before i pin it <laughs> because that's how much it shifts and then i'm going to throw a couple pins in it Now I'm going to sew a scant quarter inch on either side. Look at that, it's moving already. I'm going to fidget with this a bit and then I'm going to sew a scant quarter on either side of this line. So 
we've got two more to do and honestly I haven't learned anything about how to make these stay any better than they they uh, it's just it's a slippery fabric this right here is a godsend though this this fur wizard is perfect it picks up anything just perfectly it's great you can use it on the flat surface and the fabric and it just picks it up without even a hassle it's just perfect and then you just stick it in there and no worries it has been a lovely addition but we're just going to keep trying to get right sides together and what happens is you put it on there and the minute that you touch it it shifts the minute that you touch it it shifts it it does its own thing don't be worried about it though you just want to be sure that you're sewing a scant quarter do not take a full quarter take a scant quarter and you're going to need to probably have a block lock in order to do this technique with this because you really need something that you can push up against and square up because we will be trying to square these up the best that we can so I'm just gonna throw some wonder clips on here and just sew down each side the best I can it is going to shift we are not gonna freak out about it we know it's gonna happen And I'm just throwing a couple of wonder clips on there. So now comes the fun part. Now, they're all off in some kind of way. Um, some are off more than others, but they are not directly on top of one another the way they would be if I were piecing with cotton. I'm not going to freak out about it. Um, I sewed a scant quarter inch on either side, which is going to leave me some room to be great. And I'm using a block lock, which wants me to win. All right, so I just went ahead and split that straight down the middle. I'm gonna put the pink side facing up. I'm gonna do some finger pressing here. Remember, we starched the cotton fabric like the Dickens, and so really, you don't have to worry about it doing too much buckling. I'm gonna use my block lock here to get the size that I need. And I like it because it, it hits right up on that, that ledge. And now I'm going to see if I can get what I need and I can. I'm just going to do a little mini adjustment here. And there we go. Nothing to cut off across the top. I'm going to take my two hands. I'm going to rotate. I know this looks crazy, but it's what we do. What kind of rotating did I just do? There we go. I'm going to pull it down till it's right where I need it. And then I'm going to take two cuts. And we're good. And I'm going to do that with each one of these until I get everything that I need. Now we have to figure out, we've got a little bit of fuzzy there, no problem. Now we don't. Just as simple as that. Now it's there. Love this thing. Now I need to put them all in a spiral, a windmill, not a spiral, a windmill. Hold on. So here we are. We've taken our four little pieces, little cutie patooties. And now this gets a little bit easier, not a ton easier, but it gets a little bit easier. Right sides together. It will nest. You're gonna pin on this one. Don't wonder clip, but actually use pins. 
and make sure that it nests right here. You can feel it. And then you're just going to pin and pin and just sew straight across. It's less difficult. It's going to look a little, you know, it's chunky, but it's not going to be a big deal. And I'm actually going to flip it this way because I like to sew with the minky on the feed dogs. And I'm just gonna sew my quarter inch. No worries. So we did a little pinning. We did a little sewing. And we're gonna go right sides together here. And we are going to And like I said, I'm going to just flip this around after I fiddle a bit. There we go. Okay. So now that these two have been all done up, now we're going to take them to each other and going to try to nest them again. You'll feel it. One will go one way, one will go the other. And I'm going to pin in the center where I feel one going through one way and one going through the other. And I'm going to pin these ends here. And actually, this part feels better for whatever reason. I don't know. It just seems like it moves a little less. And then that just lines up there. And I'm going to sew down. So we have all of our um, pinwheels here. I mean, just tons of them and tons of them. Just pinwheel city and they look good, right? They all come to a point in there. It doesn't look bad. It feels fluffy. Um, if you have any of these little things, this has just been a true saver for this. Just a little brush and it just picks everything up and goes right back in here. And when you pull it out, it's ready to use again. This has really been excellent for this project. I mean, without that, I might have thrown in the towel, guys. So now we're just going to take our cutout strips here and we are going to put them in between a couple of these guys. I okay, so as we're looking at this, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need six of these and then the in between these I must need five. One, two, three, four, five. And so I need five of those. And we're just going to piece them straight across. And that will be one part of that row done. It should be nice and easy. I don't think I'm going to have a hard time just putting these right sides together and sewing down. I think we'll be, I think we'll be okay. Just going to right sides down and just sew down. So now that we have our pinwheels all done, I need to go on ahead and put the little bit of sashing that goes in between. And we need to have six, one, two, three, four, um, six of these across. Now, of course, I can't show you that because I've run out of room, but you get it. And then we put a little sash in between. You guys, this fur wizard has been the perfect addition to this project. When I say perfect addition, I mean perfect addition. Just a little wiping and it just, whoop, it picks up everything. And then you just plop it back in its little house and you're good to go. I'm really appreciative of having that. That has made this project very bearable. All right, so 
um, I'm just going to go right sides together. I might throw a pin in there just for good measure and sew across. So I have sewn my first side on and it just went on swimmingly, no issues. And of course, we're going to press this flat um, with our fingers. We're just doing some finger pressing, no major pressing here. This is coming out very randomly cute. Now I'm just going to add another piece over here to this side, right sides together, and see what we get. And this is what it looks like. So we just lay it flat. Huh. This is coming out very, very cute. All right, so now I've got to do many, many more. And um, it's going quickly, so it's not taking a lot of time. So now that we have this strip all sewn together, I need to put the top strip and the bottom strip on it. So let me find those, and then we will sew those on. We have the two strips, and I'm just going to sew one on the top and sew one on the bottom and be done with that. Nice and simple. Something I think I'm going to do is because this has so much play in it, you know, it's super duper stretchy. It's got that poly thread in there. We've got some play. I am going to measure exactly how long because you the strip is oversized. And you just center it and sew it down. I think I'm going to measure it against the strip, the focal strip. I think that's how we're going to do that. So here is Mr. Focal Strip. And I am going to... I'm going to measure it just to be sure that it's as long as we need it to be. And then pin it. Am I going to sew it to that strip first? I can. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sew this strip to this first. And then I will sew this whole piece to this. And then we'll do the same thing with the next strip. We'll do a, a top and a bottom and then we'll sew those together. Yes, 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 yes. So I have taken this top strip, this top panel and sewn this to the bottom just so that I could be sure that this is the appropriate length and I can do a little pinning so that I make sure that it is nice and appropriate and then I'll just keep stripping all the way down. So now that we have all of our pieces sewn together, um, the center part, we need to do the borders. So I'm just taking these last strips and I'm taking off the selvage and I'm going to sew them end to end in a very long line. And then I'm going to measure them, cut, and put them on the, the quilt. Nothing too difficult about that. Just measure and plop it on the quilt. Let's 